India achieves the landmark of more than 10 lakh recoveries from COVID-19 as efforts to contain the spread of the virus bear fruits. The health ministry says that this is an occasion to stand up and applaud our doctors, nurses and all the frontline healthcare workers and it is because of their sheer dedication to duty and selfless sacrifice which has made such a tremendous recovery of COVID-19 patients a reality. Union Cabinet approves the new education policy 2020 aimed at universalization of the education from preschool to the secondary level. New 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 school curriculum proposed. Higher education curriculum to have flexibility of the subjects with promoting multilingualism in both the schools and the higher education. Teaching up to at least grade 5 to be in the mother tongue and regional language. The Home Affairs Ministry issues Unlock 3 guidelines. The lockdown in containment zones extended to 31st of August. Night curfew ends across the country. Yoga institutes and gymnasium to open from the 5th of August. Educational institutions, metro and cinema halls to remain closed. Prime Minister Modi and the Prime Minister of Mauritius, Pravin Jagannath, to jointly inaugurate the new Supreme Court building of Mauritius via video conferencing today. Constructed with the Indian grant assistance, the new building project is one of the five projects being implemented under a special economic package of 353 million US dollars, extended by India to Mauritius in 2016. Prime Minister Modi interacts with the stakeholders from the banks and the NBFCs to discuss and deliberate on the vision and roadmap for the future. Discussion included crucial role of the financial and the banking system of supporting growth. During the interaction, it was emphasized that the government is firmly behind the banking system. The beneficiary base of financial inclusion scheme, the Pradhan Mantri Jantan Yojda, crosses 40 crore. Over 1,30,000 crore rupee balance in the accounts of the beneficiaries. The scheme launched on 28th of August 2014 envisages universal access to banking facilities for every household, financial literacy, access to credit, insurance and pension. Hello and good morning. You're watching Doordarshan News with me, Nancy Kohli. And the big breaking news we're tracking at this hour is, of course, India achieving the landmark of more than 10 lakh recoveries from COVID-19. The Health and Family Welfare Ministry has said, I quote, this is an occasion to stand up and applaud our doctors, nurses and all the frontline healthcare workers. It is their sheer dedication to duty and the selfless sacrifice which has made such a tremendous recovery of the COVID-19 patients a reality. Let's now go across to our correspondent Nitendra Singh who is joining us with more updates on that. Nitendra, of course, this is something, you know, uh, a, a silver lining in all of this as far as COVID-19 pandemic in India at least is concerned that the recovery rate, they're getting better by the day. And now we have achieved the landmark of, uh, you know, of more than 10 lakh recoveries now clearly setting an example for the entire world on how the effective containment strategy has borne results. Nitendra, are you with us? All right, we'll be joining uh, Nitendra in just a bit, but this is the big breaking news that we're tracking at this hour, of course, as far as the recoveries from COVID-19 in India is concerned. India, they are clearly leading by example in terms of uh, the implementation of the effective containment strategy, uh, aggressive testing, contact tracing, all of those measures clearly bearing fruits. And, uh, of course, uh, more and more results now coming uh, in the days up ahead as well, whereas India now achieving the landmark of more than 10 lakh recoveries from COVID-19 and the Health and Family Welfare Ministry has applauded the hard work of the doctors, the nurses and all the frontline healthcare workers. Okay, we have our correspondent 
Nitendra back with us now. Nitendra, this is of course, uh, you know, the silver lining in all of the COVID-19 pandemic and at least India is concerned is uh, the recovery rate going up by the day and now the India achieving the landmark uh, of more than 10 lakh recoveries made so far from COVID-19. Uh, it is a very important opportunity for our doctors, nurses and frontline healthcare workers. It is a very important opportunity that today, भारत जो है करीब करीब रिकवरी जो है उनके पेशेंट की 10 लाख से ज्यादा पेशेंट की रिकवरी हुई है और रिकवरी रेट 64.64 परसेंट से ज्यादा है और ये ये पिछले छह महीने की हम बात की जाए तो आज खास दिन ये भी माना जाए कि पहला केस 30 जनवरी को 30 जनवरी को आया था और आज छह महीने हो गए टोटल भारत में कोरोना वायरस के आए हुए और उसके बाद से भारत ने कई सारे उपलब्धि हासिल की है फैटिलिटी रेट दुनिया के मुकाबले सबसे कम है जो संक्रमण का दर है वो सबसे कम है दुनिया के मुकाबले भारत में इसके अलावा भारत ने कई अपने इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को बढ़ाया है हॉस्पिटल्स डेडिकेटेड कोविड केयर सेंटर बनाया है हॉस्पिटल्स बनाया है पीपीई किट भारत में बनने लगे एन नाइन्टी भारत में मास्क बनने लगे तो तमाम ऐसी जो जरूरत की चीजें थी भारत ने अपने बलबूते पे सब कुछ किया है और डॉक्टरों की डेडिकेटेड टीम जिस तरीके से इलाज की है कोविड के मरीजों की उसका ये सकारात्मक नतीजा रहा कि लोग ज्यादा से ज्यादा अस्पतालों से तो ठीक होकर के अपने घर गए और आज रिकवरी रेट भी 64 परसेंट से ज्यादा है और 10 लाख से अधिक मरीज ठीक होकर के अपने घर को Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Nitendra, of course, you've been covering uh, this beat and the COVID-19 pandemic in India very closely. So I would like to now ask you, you know, uh, of course, these 10 lakh recoveries that now have been recorded in India, uh, would, would it be now appropriate to say, can we comfortably say that India has won this war against COVID-19 pandemic? Because on one hand, our recovery rate is increasing by the day. We are getting to that number. We have reached 10 lakh recoveries from COVID-19 so far. And the case fertility rate is the lowest in India among the world. So can we now comfortably say that through the measures that India has implemented, we have uh, won the war against COVID-19 pandemic in this wave at least? देखिए ये कहना बहुत अभी जल्दबाजी होगी कि भारत इस लड़ाई को जीत चुका है लेकिन हाँ जीत की ओर अग्रसर है जीत की ओर तेजी से कदम आगे बढ़ा रहा है और वो इसलिए पॉसिबल है क्योंकि जो सरकार ने कदम उठाए हैं लोगों ने उस तमाम जो गाइडलाइंस है जो सरकार के दिशा निर्देश है उसका पालन किया है और सरकार ने जो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर क्रिएट किया है कोविड को लेकर के वो तमाम सबकी मिली जो पॉलिसी है जो टेस्ट ट्रेस और ट्रीटमेंट की पॉलिसी है कंटेनमेंट जोन की पॉलिसी है और समय समय पर जो समय पर जो लॉकडाउन किया गया था उसके बाद धीरे धीरे अब खोल दिया गया है अनलॉक की तरफ हम बढ़ रहे हैं तो ये तमाम ऐसे कदम हैं जिसके जिससे ये कहा जा सकता है कि भारत इस लड़ाई को जीत जीतने की ओर अग्रसर है आगे बढ़ रहा है और अगर सब कुछ ठीक रहा लोगों का अप्रोच अच्छा रहा लोग मास्क पहनेंगे जब सार्वजनिक जर्जनिक जगह पर जाएंगे या घर से बाहर निकलेंगे सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग का पालन करेंगे और हैंड हाइजीन का पालन करेंगे तो निश्चित तौर पे इस लड़ाई को आने वाले दिनों में भारत जीतेगा और बहुत ही सफलता के साथ इस लड़ाई को जीतेगा Absolutely. Nitendra, thanks very much for joining us for the moment and sharing all those inputs. So India, they're on the path uh, clearly to winning the war against COVID-19 pandemic. And we have today again achieved a yet another landmark uh, achievement, which is uh, in terms of over 10 lakh recoveries that have been recorded in India. Clearly, they're setting an example that by effective containment strategy, citizens being responsible as far as maintaining social distancing and wearing masks is concerned, aggressive testing, contact tracing, all of those measures that have been put in place by the government and the health administration clearly bearing fruits and uh, giving results there in terms of uh, recovery rate getting better by the day and the case fertility rate also low uh, lowest uh, there in india in the world moving on now to our next big focus and that is about a single regulator for the higher education institutions multiple entry and exit options in degree courses the discontinuation of the mphil programs low stakes board examinations common entrance examinations for universities are among the highlights of the new national education policy approved by the union cabinet on wednesday the cabinet has also approved changing the name of the hrd ministry to education ministry at least 3.5 crore new seats will be added to higher education institutions. Here's a report. In a major move, the Union Cabinet, chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, approved the National Education Policy 2020 on Wednesday. 
making way for large-scale transformational reforms in both school and higher education sectors. This is the first education policy of the 21st century and replaces the 34-year-old national policy on education 1986. This is very important because in 34 years, there was no इसलिए आज का ये जो परिवर्तन है और जो नई शिक्षा नीति है मुझे विश्वास है कि पूरा समाज और सभी देशवासी इसका स्वागत करेंगे और दुनिया के शिक्षाविद भी इसको निश्चित रूप से सराहना करेंगे मानव संसाधन विकास मंत्रालय जो आप शिक्षा मंत्रालय के नाम से जाना जाएगा उस मंत्रालय की ओर से मैं अपने देश के यशस्वी प्रधानमंत्री जी का आभार प्रकट करना चाहता हूं। मुझे भरोसा है कि जो ये हमारी शिक्षा नीति है ज्ञान विज्ञान अनुसंधान नवाचार प्रौद्योगिकी से युक्त संस्कार क्षम मूल्य परक हर क्षेत्र में हर क्षेत्र में हर परिस्थिति का मुकाबला करने वाली पूरी दुनिया के लिए Bharat me gyan ki mahashakti ki roop me ubar kar ke aayegi. With emphasis on early childhood care and education, the 10 plus 2 structure of school curricula is to be replaced by a 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 curricula structure corresponding to ages 3 to 8, 8 to 11, 11 to 14 and 14 to 18 years respectively. It is aimed at bringing transformational change, not incremental change, but transformational change in both higher education sector and the school education. The new system in school will be 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 in place of 10 plus 2. In higher education, there will be multiple entry and exit system, introduction of four-year courses, common regulatory system by a common regulator, single regulator. Jo shiksha ka madhyam hai, उसमें यह लिखा है कि जहां तक पॉसिबिलिटी हो वहां तक पांचवी कक्षा तक मातृभाषा या नहीं तो क्षेत्रीय भाषा हो या घर की जो भाषा बोली जाती है उसमें पढ़ाया जाए और हो सके तो आठवीं तक पढ़ाया जाए और उसके आगे भी पढ़ाया जाए जहां पॉसिबल हो यह एक होलिस्टिक रिपोर्ट कार्ड की बात हो रही है इसमें तीन तरह के मूल्यांकन होंगे एक तो खुद बच्चा अपना मूल्यांकन करेगा दूसरा सहपाठी जो उसके हैं वो उसका मूल्यांकन करेंगे और तीसरा उसके शिक्षक उसका मूल्यांकन करेंगे द की हाइलाइट्स ऑफ द नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी 2020 आर स्कूल एजुकेशन इंश्योरिंग यूनिवर्सल एक्सेस एट ऑल लेवल्स ऑफ स्कूल एजुकेशन अर्ली चाइल्डहुड केयर एंड एजुकेशन विद न्यू करिकुलम एंड पेडेगॉजिकल स्ट्रक्चर अटेनिंग फाउंडेशनल लिटरेसी एंड न्यूमरेसी रिफॉर्म्स इन स्कूल करिकुलम एंड पेडेगॉजी multilingualism and the power of language, assessment reforms, equitable and inclusive education, robust teacher recruitment and career path, school governance, standard setting and accreditation for school education, higher education, increased GER to 50% by 2035, holistic multidisciplinary education, multidisciplinary education and research universities, the National Research Foundation. National Education Policy 2020 aims to increase the gross enrollment ratio in higher education, including vocational education, from 26.3% in 2018 to 50% by 2035. 3.5 crore new seats will be added to higher education institutions. The committee, headed by former ISRO chairman K. Kasturi Rangan submitted the draft of the new education policy to Human Resource Development Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank. The draft of the new education policy was made public for the opinion of various parties. Regarding the technology, you know that the internet and things like that were just getting into the picture and 30 years back. And today you know the importance of the internet in the context of a technology for education. Uh, also, course. things are now changing even faster in terms of artificial intelligence, expert systems, machine intelligence and things of that kind. And they are all going to have disruptive influence on the educational front. Built on the foundational pillars of access, equity, quality, affordability and accountability, this policy is aligned to the 2030 
agenda for sustainable development and aims to transform India into a vibrant knowledge society and global knowledge superpower by making both school and college education more holistic, flexible, multidisciplinary, suited to 21st century needs and aimed at bringing out the unique capabilities of each student. Bureau Report, DD India. And uh, Prime Minister Modi has wholeheartedly welcomed the approval of the National Education Policy 2020. In a series of tweets, he termed the NEP as long-due and much-awaited reform in the education sector that will transform the millions of lives in the times to come. NEP 2020 is based on the pillars of access, equity, quality, affordability, accountability. In this era of knowledge where learning, research and innovation are important, the NEP will transform India into a vibrant knowledge hub. The Prime Minister also said that the National Education Policy 2020 gives utmost importance towards ensuring universal access to school education. There is emphasis on aspects such as better infrastructure, innovative education centers to bring back dropouts into the mainstream, facilitating multiple pathways to learning among others. The Prime Minister also stressed that the framing of the National Education Policy 2020 will be remembered as a shining example of participative governance. He said, I quote again, I thank all those who have worked hard in the formulation of the NEP 2020. May education brighten our nation and lead it to prosperity, unquote. And the Union Home Minister Amit Shah has welcomed the National Education Policy 2020. The Home Minister has tweeted, I quote, Education is the foundation of any nation and for the last 34 years, India was in dire need of such a futuristic policy. I express my gratitude to Prime Minister Modi and Dr. Ramesh Bokriyal Nishank on this landmark policy decision which will play an unprecedented role in the building of a new India. The focus on different aspects will lead to the overall development of the children across the country. The National Education Policy 2020 will also have the provision of academic credit bank, increased investment in education system, internationalization of education, special education zone for the disadvantaged regions, upgradation of the KGBVs to 12th grade and an increased focus on Lok Vidya and the use of technology." Unquote. And the CII has also uh, welcomed uh, the National Education Policy 2020 that was approved by the Cabinet yesterday. It's a landmark uh, document uh, coming after several years of consultations. The government has brought out a commendable education strategy to meet the changing demands in education. The CII said it's happy to know that several of its recommendations have also been incorporated in the policy such as creation of special education zones, the mission mode efforts for achieving foundational learning outcomes and the emphasis on vocalizational of the school education. The CII said it looks forward to working closely with the Ministry of Education on various action points which were discussed at the CII Education Summit and which have become part of the new system with the approval of the National Education Policy. And uh, moving on now to our next big focus as far as the Ministry of Home Affairs issuing new guidelines as opening up of more activities in areas outside the containment zones. In Unlock 3, that will come into effect from the 1st of August. The process of phased reopening of activities has been extended further. The new guidelines are based on feedback received from the states and the union territories and extensive consultations held with related central ministries and departments. The salient features of the new guidelines include the restrictions on the movements of individuals during night have been removed. The yoga institutes and gymnasium will be allowed to open from the 5th of August. In this regard, the standard operating procedure will be issued by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for ensuring social distancing and to contain the spread of COVID-19. The Independence Day functions will be allowed with social distancing and by following other approved health protocols. Schools and colleges and coaching institutions will remain closed till 31st August. The international air travel of passengers has been permitted in a limited manner under the Vande Bharat mission. Further opening up will take place in a calibrated manner. The activities not to be permitted include the metro rail, cinema halls, swimming pools, entertainment parks,
theatres, bars, auditoriums, assembly halls and similar places. The large congregations of any kind will also not be allowed. Vulnerable people, that is uh, persons above the age of 65, persons with comorbidities, pregnant women and children below the age of 10 years are advised to stay at home except for meeting essential requirements and for health purposes. And uh, let's now go across to our correspondent Arun Sharma who is joining us with more updates on the Unlock 3 guidelines. Uh, Arun, uh, uh, you know of course a fine balance there being, uh, being, uh, being struck as far as e opening up the economy as far as you know maintaining utmost caution as far as tackling COVID-19 uh, uh, you know on an individual level is concerned because the cases have stabilized though at some places uh, you know still uh, moving ahead with caution. That's right, Nancy. Uh, and the number of recovered patients or the Absolutely. recovery rate is giving confidence to the government yes. to further open up uh, the economy. Uh, we have seen that the recovery cases or the recovery uh, percentage is close to 65% on the national level. Yes. Uh, various right. states uh, that was showing uh, some massive spike in the number of cases that has shown uh, that has uh, started to decline now. Hmm. So these recovery uh, rates uh, or the percentage of recovery rate is giving confidence to the government. So the big part of this unlock three is that now we are gradually further opening up mm. as we have see, uh, seen in unlock one and unlock two now we are further opening up so big takeaway of this uh, unlock three is that there will be no night curfew from now onwards in the earlier unlock we have seen that there were night curfew from nine to six and then ten to six but now there is no night curfew as such second important uh, as a big takeaway is that the yoga and the gymnasiums will now open up and uh, this will open up uh, from 5th of august and separate sop will also come as far as uh, the yoga and gymnasiums are concerned but uh, the cause of concern uh, Nancy is the containment zone. So government is ensuring that there should be strict lockdown as far as the containment zones of our country are concerned. Mm. But other than the lock, uh, other than the containment zone, that means apart from containment zones, economic activity more or less is open uh, open now. Mm. Now, which are the things that are closed now? So till 31st of August, the schools, the education institutions, the uh, the colleges, they shall also remain closed because government uh, uh, has, uh, uh, you know, uh, talked to various stakeholders re uh, uh, relating to the education sector, uh, related to the uh, to the various education uh, stakeholders, and they are, they have come to the conclusion that till 31st of August at least, the education and school is, uh, uh, and uh, the institution should should be closed. Second important part is that the cinema halls, the metro rails, this shall also be closed. But then yes, uh, the the government is still in, uh, you know, uh, talks with various stakeholders and if. If in case uh, you know uh, a separate SOP can be formed and uh, uh, this is likely to be opened up but as of now cinema halls, uh, metro rails, uh, swimming uh, pools, entertainment parks all this right. shall remain closed. So now gradually we are opening up in this yes, unlocked way. All right. All right, Arun, thanks very much for joining us for the moment and uh, sharing all those inputs as far as the guidelines coming on the unlock 3.0 are concerned. Moving on now, 26 June 2020 became a historic day for displaced people of Jammu and Kashmir when they received domicile certificates following the abrogation of Article 370 last year. Many such people had given up hope, but they finally have seen a new dawn. Here's a report. The story of these displaced people in German Kashmir is heart-wrenching. At the time of partition, lakhs of refugees took refuge in different parts of the country and started a new life. However, the fate betrayed those who came to Jammu from Mirpur, Muzaffarabad, Kotli and West Pakistan. These people, while risking their lives from across the border, camped in Jammu and its adjoining areas. Later, many people took refuge in Delhi and nearby areas, while many others prefer to stay back in Jammu. Three generations lived in refugee camps without their own roof over their heads. They did not get any education and developmental opportunities. Members of the Valmiki Samaj, the refugees from Pakistan and the Gurkha Jawans, were deprived of their citizenship rights despite living in Jammu and Kashmir for years. Neither their children got any education nor any government job. However, they are now eligible for all the basic citizen rights after getting domicile certificates. 
पब्लिक को घर घर में सर्टिफिकेट देने की कोशिश की है उसी सिलसिले में आज हमने दो पंचायतें कवर की हैं एक प्राणू और रेवाड़ा तो मैक्सिमम हमने फर्स्ट स्टेप्स में जो कवरेज की है वो स्टूडेंट्स को मद्देनजर रखा है कि पहले स्टेप में हम स्टूडेंट्स और स्टूडेंट्स को देंगे हम डिस्ट्रिक्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन के बहुत ही ज़्यादा शुक्रगुजार हैं कि उन्होंने एक एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव कैंप का यहाँ पर इनका किया जिसकी वजह से यहाँ पर फास्ट ट्रैक बेसिस पे हमें यहाँ ये यह डोमिसाइल सर्टिफिकेट इशू हो रहे हैं और ख़ास तौर पे स्टूडेंट्स को इसको ज़्यादा फ़ायदा होगा क्योंकि जो नया डोमिसाइल ला है उसमें जो जॉब्स में रिजर्वेशन है तो उसको लेके जो नई पोस्ट्स वगैरह एडवर्टाइज करेगी जो यूनियन टेरिटरी एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन जो है जम्मू कश्मीर की जो पोस्ट एडवर्टाइज करेगी तो यहाँ की जो अनएम्प्लॉयड यूथ है उनके लिए ख़ास तौर पर एक बहुत ही ज़्यादा फ़ायदेमंद होगा The day 5th of August has turned out to be a day of justice for thousands of such people living in Jammu and Kashmir. The members of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes of the country achieved considerable progress after availing the benefits of the reservation. However, the plight of such refugee people remained the same in Jammu and Kashmir. The fate of thousands of such people changed in one year after government scrapped the Article 370 and Article 35A of the Indian Constitution on the 5th of August 2019. Finally, these people have got their own identity. Bureau report, DD India. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the news. Thanks for being with us.